Today, we're going to dive into how I use Sunsama for task management. I'm very excited because I get to share all of my tasks and what I actually get up to in a day, but also some of the things that I use in the background to help me be a little bit more organized in my fairly crazy day. I sh will share with some of my backlogging techniques, uh, the way I use calendar blocking, and the way I genuinely plan a week, and everything you need to know about Sunsama as well, and why I tend to use it above the other applications. So my name is Francesco, and welcome to Keep Productive. So, Sunsama is one of those apps that's uh, been in my life for about a year and a bit now. I transitioned over to it from Todoist. I was using Todoist for nine years previously, and I had a bit of a life change, I guess. I became a new, a, a dad, a new dad, a dad, and then I also sort of fully committed to doing Keep Productive full-time about two years ago. And um, I guess the structure of my life changed a little bit. And uh, whilst I took a look at my foundations and sort of went, what's wrong with me? Um, that really helped, but it also transitioned over to something a little bit more advanced for task management in terms of, I guess it was more hand-holding and the sort of limits that they set on you in the planning process inside of Salsama that had me hooked with it. Now you can find Sansama below. This video isn't sponsored by them or anything like that, but we do have an affiliate link. We have this with all of the software that we tend to recommend here on the channel, just because it helps us keep the lights on and you can buy it through us if you fancy it. If you don't, cool, perfect. <laughs> so as you can see, this is my son Sama in front of us. And as I said, I use it for tasks. I also use it um, lightly to manage meetings and things like that. In terms of just being able to create tasks for those meetings so that I have some notes in advance for that. So you can see here that um, first off, I tend to block a week in advance. So I'll plan my week ahead. So this was fully planned. And as you can see, fairly light on the old, um, the amount of tasks I add, I'll talk to that in a moment. But you can see here that what is really different, I guess, is that I'm sort of, I, I guess, I'm not trying to overload it too much, but I'm also trying to balance that work and personal. So on the left-hand side, I can narrow down what's work-focused tasks and what's personal-focused tasks, but I tend to view it in this all view, which is quite nice. Now, anything in my day that crops up, like a link or an idea or even a task, I tend to just lob in this side area called backlog. Now, backlog is perfect because I can drag stuff on. It's always a temptation to just drag stuff on and sort of overload your list. So when I'm working, I tend to pop it in this view here, which is my calendar blocking view. Now, I haven't actually booked out my day. So what I tend to do, I had a little bit of a reshuffle this morning because I wanted to do less recording over the space of one day, but more sort of on one, on two days. I'll explain to that in a moment. But what I tend to do is I do the following. I When I start a day, I hit focus. And then what I do is I drag, say, record YouTube, because I'm doing it now, over into the area that I'm doing. I'll also brief um, thumbnails and videos. That's actually gonna take a little bit longer because I've gotta do uploads and things like that. And as you can see, I'm fairly light for the afternoon. So if I'm in that process and I'm like, okay, I've got a large task, a medium task, and I need something additional to that, I will then go to my backlog and be like, okay, Android PR and uh, media is something I need to focus on. And I go back to this view and I pop it in the afternoon. So it does help me to focus on what I'm actually blocking in my day. So I've only started about sort of six months ago doing calendar blocking and I found that the technique itself was really, really helpful. We actually just launched a course about the basics of calendar blocking if you are interested and it is below. It's a Skillshare class which you can find there too. So this is sort of the view that I tend to go with if I'm blocking out my day and to start with. Um, I used to, when I was transitioning over, bring in my Todoist items, I no longer have that. But largely, this is where I structure everything. Now, if I was, say, planning tomorrow as a, a, as a day, I would then hit plan on here. Now, this way, I can actually go through their planning process, which I really, really like. It does help you to, how do you say it, like, handhold you through the process of planning, which is something that you'd assume is something you don't need, but once you do it, it actually helps you to sort of dummy proof your system. So I can see, okay, do I need to allocate anything to the next day or to the next week? No, um, and then what I can do, and as you can see, I can tend to time block it out. 
I'm using so many other, I'm testing so many other practice productivity applications that that one's just crept in. But you can start to see how that process can be helpful. And I potentially would time block for the week in advance if I know my schedules and I can plan around my meetings or uh, personal events and things like that, which is pretty helpful. So a week in advance is tend to be what I've got unless I have a launch. So you can see here the Bento Android launch is on Monday. So I'm tending to organize that there. And you can see also here that I've got personal tasks as well inside of here too. So you can assign channels to it, which is perfect because I can see at a click of a button what I need to do, the bins, social events and organize them, my banking review, and also call Ford Finance and talk through with them. A fun conversation, I'm sure. <laughs> so as you can see, it's sort of fairly well coordinated. I bring in Google Calendar. So for example, I had to put the fridge and the washing machine out to collect for a sort of bulky waste collection. And that was all up there this morning. So uh, it brings in any of that and you can convert it to a task too. I think the real magic of Sansama is when you're inside a specific task. So for example, in here, what I can do very quickly is enter this focus mode. And you can see here that I've actually done 10 minutes of this and continue the timer. I love this mode. A lot of productivity applications tend to put it in front or I guess allow you to see some of the stuff behind, but I love this mode of focus. And if I were to say pop out to get a cup of tea and have a break, talk to my wife, then I could get, click break and I could allocate, okay, I need a 10 minute break and then come back to it. And I really love that because uh, at the end of the week, they give you reports. I tend not to use the reports as much anymore. However, I found it pretty helpful to be able to see that all in one. You can see here, I've added, I tend to add a few notes because I don't like switching applications when I'm in it. So this helps me to just focus and plan on what's in sort of my, my list. So in terms of the backlog, the backlog's a, a little bit of a difficult one. My process behind it is collect, 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 for a day and clear once a day. This takes me no longer than five minutes, but it gives me five minutes of time just to clear the inbox of tasks of what I got to do. So you can see here that I can just go through and just drag them on, which is perfect. And I try not to overload myself. So coming back to the overloading thing, I'm gonna use a methodology which we created called the Bento methodology. Um, you can find the course below. And basically I do a large task, a medium task and a small task. And what I try and do with that is keep something fairly weighty for the day, have something fairly medium energy and low energy. And I may do some extra tasks on top of that, but only when I focused and completed on those three items. And if I complete those three items, I tend to feel that level of achievement, which is what you're meant to feel with productivity. So um, I also do a little bit of task typing. So for example, yesterday was more focused around content ideas, uploading articles, creating new content and, I, and, and thoughts. So you can see the theme, it's fairly, allocated around that type of task. So I really like that. Now, a lot of people ask, how do you use the calendar view? Calendar view, I barely use it really because I like the task view so much, but the, the task view is, uh, the calendar view is really nice in terms of just structuring a week ahead and I can still do the regular backlogging onto it. So that might be a, a more fine tuned way of doing that. I also don't use the weekly objectives as much as I used to. Because I am using the Bento methodology, it sort of outrules that, I guess, to some extent. But then again, I don't know whether I'll come back to it in the future um, if I'm looking to just optimize my, my setup a little bit further. So that is how I use tasks in Sunsama. Now, I really like the experience for, I think it's more the sort of process you go through of organizing a day and making sure you don't overwhelm yourself. One of the features I love is this, you might not see it here, the total time remaining. So if you allocate too much to yourself, it will come up either orange or red, I believe, which indicates you have spent too much time on this task, which is really nice. And I also like the newer feature they added with the ability to quickly change your, your blocked time as well. And it does a two week sync with Google Calendar, which means if I update something on my Google Calendar on my phone, it simply does it. I'm not too fussed about using the Sansama mobile application just because I only use it as like a reader experience, which is where it's designed for. So I only capture stuff on there and I do most of my focused work on here. 
So before it was more about like organizing a setup with Todoist, but having to rely on myself to go in and manage that. But now it's much more about, okay, I literally just press a few buttons. It welcomes me to my day, helps me plan the day, helps me keep focused on the day. I quite like how it brings everything together. So Sansama is my choice. And obviously that's how I've gone about going with it. I think it definitely was something that was a big life change that sort of adapted to. I had used to do this perfectly fine for nine years. I'd probably still be fine on it, but I think it was just more, I guess, the hand-holding aspect and the planning aspect that with um, running a sort of a, a company and a sort of publication with it, it really did help sort of me to refine my focus at least. So it's weird having to explain why I use productivity apps sometimes, but I tend to, when I, when I tend, to, tend to go with them, I tend to stick with them, which is something that I truly advocate with productivity applications. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let us know in the comments below what to-do list application you're using and how you go about using it. Hopefully I covered everything you need to know about this one. And if you have any questions about Sansama particularly, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, folks, thank you very much. And I'll see you all very soon. Make sure to subscribe and uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. Oh, if you want a great video to watch, our video where we do productivity predictions with Tiago is a fantastic one and it's doing very well at the moment. So go and check that out and I'll put it on screen to go and head to it now.